Hello there everyone, I'm Sidenko, and I just finished this piece recently. Now, originally I made it as a sketch, and I wasn't sure if I was going to complete it, but I decided to continue it after I had posted it online, and I decided to continue it from there. And then I realized, hey, I could probably actually record this and talk about my process for making a piece. So that's why I already had the legs sort of finished, but not to the same level. So here you can see me start doing the line art. And I wasn't sure if I was going to just use the sketch I already had, or if I was going to start from scratch. And I decided to start completely from scratch to have that clean line art, even though it's the bane of my existence, even though it's not completely clean. I really struggle with line art, but I think I did an all right job here. So you can see all the hair strands I did individually. Here in the armor, I'm trying to get these lines to be at the right angle. Um, I guess for this character, the design was I wanted a character who had a bunch of different pieces of armor that weren't necessarily from the same place. So you'll see later that they're shaded differently. And it's not a complete set of armor. It's maybe she picked up some here, she won some there, maybe she bought some later. But you'll see that it doesn't necessarily fit one theme. It's fairly different. So here in the Greaves, I actually switch up the design quite a bit. You still, you'll see me go back here a few times, but I add like to the back of the leg. I don't go with the original just two strap design. I add more armor. I don't add the little details on the greaves. So here I'm trying to demonstrate that this armor is more worn, it's more damaged. So I think that'll provide a good contrast later with the breastplate. You'll see that. So here I'm working to add the armor around her shoulders and neck. So this armor like isn't complete, doesn't cover her forearms or a head but I definitely wanted it to cover her chest, her neck. I felt those were very important vital spots, you know? And this cloth in the middle is just something I sort of do, I noticed. I add that in a few of my designs, just a bit of flair. Now, I usually do have a stabilizer on my pen, but I usually don't set it any higher than weighted. So there are three settings. There's basic, there's weighted, and there's um, stabilizer. And I usually just leave it at weighted. So here I'm using lines, the line tool, because I want to get a very straight line and I'm manipulating it to get that very straight line. And I noticed that, oh, this halberd is around her height. That isn't, that doesn't feel right. Let me change that to make it slightly longer. And I had to do it in perspective. I didn't just want it facing forward or facing to the side. So I have it at a bit of an angle. I don't feel I got the pike at the end right, but I do feel happy with the ax itself. So here I used another line, this time as a sort of guide for where her feet should be because I felt she was leaning too much to one side, that her feet weren't balanced. And with that, just cleaning up a few details here and there. And here I start the coloring phase. And with coloring, the way I do it is I select everything that's not the character and then I invert my selection. And then I fill that with a basic color. In this case, it's the red you see. And then from there, I create a group layer with a bunch of other layers that all inherit the alpha 
which is the transparency of that initial layer I made. So this way I'm painting within the lines. I can use just the fill tool, use the selection tool to get anything that I didn't manage to get with the fill tool. And then I can just clean it up a bit with a pen. It's really a time-saving measure for me. So another time-saving measure I do is you will notice that I will like make one color layer and then below it, I will start another color. And the reason for that is if I already have a color down and I just paint underneath, have another layer underneath it, that means that I can be a little more careless with how I color because I know that it's not going to show. Now this has gotten me in a bit of trouble sometimes where I'm like having to move the layers around, but like less, that isn't the norm. So here I'm starting to add the shading and I decided to add a bit of color, make it a bit of gray, off blue kind of gray. And I didn't want this whole piece to just be gray and dull. So I decided to add a bit of color. Every time like you see a little pause, that's me checking my references. I have like a, a bunch of tabs open on my second screen, just with all my references and I'm clicking through them. So here's a pause. I'm going, like editing it. I of course add the highlights at like where the metal is curved. So here on the shoes, you see that I'm adding the highlight on the sort of ridge. And I realize, oh, if I'm adding highlights, that means I'm adding a really light tone. Well, well, I'm tinting the piece, so I might as well have this background, which is a darker tone, and therefore it is it contrasts better, and I can tell what I'm doing, and my light, my highlights will stand out more. So here I'm adding chainmail, and I want it to be both opaque and not completely smooth. So I'm trying to experiment with a bunch of brushes. I eventually find the right one. I'm going through it. This isn't the neatest work, I admit, but it really does get the work done. I'm later going to lock the layer in a way that I can only paint over what I've already painted, and then I'm shading the chainmail like this. So the chainmail's initial base color is below the actual paint chainmail texture, and I could shade those diff separately. So here the cloth is getting a bit of highlight. I actually switched to another pen while I was doing this that was more streakier. Looking back, if I wanted to make the parts of the metal sort of old looking and fatigued, I could have used this brush instead as it sort of has a rougher edge. Uh, yeah, and these greaves, these greaves gives me a lot of pain. Like, I had to go back to them a few times. You're just going to see me rework them because I just, I just can't get them to look as good as the shoes did. Like, those shoes, they have nice glint to them. They're not completely clean. Like, they look rough, right? And I'm trying to get that with these greaves. I'm failing. I'm adding a bit of darkness. Eventually I move on, start working on another piece and come back to it. So these parts, this armor on the legs, I want it to be the most damaged looking. So I have it be the darkest tones. Looking back, I should have added like a brown and red to sort of rust it, give it a rusty look. But having it be dark, it does look tarnished. So I'm using like wet brushes that will actually, their opacity isn't set to maximum. And if I press lightly, they actually do mixed colors. And here with the cloth, I want, like it's supposed to be an off white and uh, so I'm shading it. Again, I don't want to have monochrome colors here. I want to 
add a bit of light and hey the background's red so the ambient light would be red so i'm adding that there trying to add a few highlights on it like it's not the same kind of shininess as a metal so you don't see the streaking but you do see light at the edges i work on the leather here So by this point, I'm just looking, trying to find anything that needs to be redone. And I realize, oh, I need to work on the skin. So start working on the skin, trying to get the planes of the face um, like sorted, like I'm darkening the parts underneath the brow ridge, underneath the hair, at the side of the face, the neck area. Then I try to add some red to try to liven up the face. Doesn't really work. I get rid of it. Decide to just add a bit of highlight to the face. Nothing shiny, but just clearly there's light there. So here I'm rearranging, rearranging some of the layers. As you can see, it caused slight trouble, but not too much. And I, at this point, I had asked for advice because I didn't. I wanted it to look shinier, and I got the advice that I should increase the contrast, therefore brighter brights, darker darks, and yeah, I have to agree. I took that piece of advice, darkened the breastplate, the shoulder, the neck area, and now I'm adding in lighter colors. And this isn't pure white, like you can't jump straight into using the pure white. So this is like off white, but very close. And with this, these wet brushes, they don't completely get me to that level. Even though I'm like very near to white, these aren't getting there unless I press really hard, unless I like start off in an area that is white and then drag it from there, it will not be white. So I really like it for that reason. I, it's very good for blending. So here, it looks definitely more reflective, and I really do like that. But there's always room for improvement, and I realize, hey, I need contrast. That means I have to reintroduce some of the gray, and I need to darken some parts of it. So that's what I'm doing now. Again, long pause, because I'm looking at reference. Yeah, and you might have noticed that I could zoom in more at this point, but I decide, I sort of try not to zoom in too much, like not stay zoom in all the time. I like zoom out, zoom in. I'm back at the greaves because they've given me so much grief. I'm trying to add a few highlights on the knee armor. And now the hair, and I have to admit, like a lot of stuff, I really, really don't know how to shade hair. Like, I know generally that the highlight goes right there, but in this piece, I'm thinking, okay, I want her hair to be black, but I don't want it to be, like, actually black. I want it to just be dark, really dark gray. So I'm just trying to experiment, trying to get the right color. So went with an off brown, now I went with an off blue, and I'm adding the shading here, darkening it, and here, honestly, I shouldn't have worked this as I did, like a less would have been more in this case, but no, yes, learning how to draw hair is something I need to do, like this works, but it could be better. So here I zoomed in because I need to focus on her lips, but I zoom out, take a better look at it, and remember that bottom lip, light is hitting it, so that part gets slightly lighter. Bottom, the top lip, the bottom of the top lip is hidden because of how it's shaped, so it gets darker. Eyes, I do not make the 
sclera of an eye, the white part, never make that pure white. So here in this case, I made it, like, tried to paint it shades of gray, then I changed to a gradient so then I could add in white as a highlight. Here, I'm finally getting to the halberd. Wasn't sure how I was going to shade it, but I eventually just decided to add some wood grain to it. Work on the piece of metal. I use the selection tool so I'm not painting over the cutting edge. And that part right there, that's actually on a different layer. So I didn't need to worry about that part particularly. I decided, hey, I could lighten up the loincloth a bit. Add a few highlights here, darken a few bits there. Just, you know, double checking my work. Yeah, another pause. At this point, I'm just experimenting with a background because I want something a little more complicated than what I had. Even though this, as it looks now, this would reduce the difference in tone. So I add a bit of different colors, simple-ish design, add a gradient to the back. I added another color to another layer that was set to darken. And then afterwards, I decided to go back and darken it again. And this is the end result. And I'm, I'm happy with it. It's not perfect, but I am really glad with what I managed to make. And, you know, I learned stuff from this piece and it's going to be better next time.